Ladies and gentlemen, please find your seats. Our program is about to begin.
Ladies and gentlemen, please find your seats. Our program will begin in three minutes. As I stand here in my hometown of Medford, Massachusetts, I can't help but reflect on my childhood and everything that's happened since then. In the last 25 years, we have witnessed natural disasters, terrorism, racial unrest, and now a devastating public health crisis. But we've also witnessed humanity at its best. Firsts, historic firsts, technological breakthroughs, and the resilience and leadership of the youngest of youth. That is the bedrock in which Room to Grow was founded on. Cementing in a vision for the future by offering resources, support, and opportunities for parents during their child's earliest and most critical years. The power of unity is real. It is clear now more than ever that if we don't come together, we will not succeed in solving the systemic challenges that plague our country and communities. Stepping outside of ourselves, putting our differences aside, listening, committing, advocating, is how we can all make a difference. After nearly two years and counting of socially distancing, elbow bumping, and fashionable mask wearing, it's time to reconnect safely. We have a lot to celebrate at Room to Grow. From our families and our team members openly pivoting to a virtual programming model, to our community who had our backs and continued to give and donate. The relationships with our families, team members, supporters, and partners are the foundation in which our program was founded. So let's toast. 
to all that we've accomplished and to what the future brings. Hello, everyone. Good evening. I'm Akila King, CEO of Room to Grow, and I am thrilled to be opening up our first ever Boston New York Joint Annual Benefit. Yes, cheers indeed. Thank you. Before we jump into tonight's program, I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who helped make today happen. To our honorary co chairs, Uma Thurman and Maya Hawk, thank you for your ambassadorship, yes, and your enthusiasm for our mission. A special thank you to our Dream Builder sponsors, Kirkland and Ellis, the Sutherland family, who's here right there in front of us, and Victoria and Don Sullivan. Our life enrichment sponsors, MUFG Bank, who's in the house, <laughs> Claire Ellis and Chad Cooper, and Michelle and Ted Noon. <laughs> Clap it up for everyone. And our Secure Start sponsors, KPMG, Walgreens Dwayne Reed, Irene and Lionel Harris, Lisa Meow and Richard Corona, Lindsay and Tim Creedon and Christy and Nick Wood. As well as all of our very generous corporate and individual sponsors, thank you. Tonight also wouldn't be possible without our amazing benefit committee, Room to Grow team, and last but certainly not least, all of you. Whether you're here with us tonight in the Foundry in New York City, at one of our fabulous watch parties in Boston, or tuning in from the comfort of your home, we couldn't do this without you. Just as the opening video said, it's time to reflect, it's time to come together, and it's time to celebrate. The last 20 months have been challenging for us all, but none more so than under-resourced communities. Communities like the ones many of our Room to Grow families reside in. Throughout our program this evening, You'll hear more about the dedicated and resilient families we partner with every day, and you'll also hear what makes Room to Grow so very, very special. Before we bring Uma up, a Room to Grow board member and ambassador for almost 23 years, I want to send a big hello and an elbow bump to our other event honorary chair, Maya Hawk, who due to an extended filming schedule is unable to join us this evening. But a quick story. Last summer, four months into the pandemic, Uma and I both found ourselves in the same town in Long Island, New York. Uma, being the caring and engaging board member and mentor that she is, called me up and she said, hey AK, if you're comfortable, why don't you swing by? I'll whip up some lunch. I believe it was spaghetti and meatballs, to be exact. We can eat outside and catch up face to face. Also, Maya and Levon will be here. I say yes as I'm driving over. I find myself unusually nervous as I've hung out with Uma Thurman before. And looking back on it, I'm quite sure it was because I was meeting the family. Of course, there was absolutely nothing to be worried about as both Maya and, Le and Levon made me feel like an instant part of the Thurman and Hawk family. And tonight, I'm honored to return the love and say, Maya, welcome officially to the Room to Grow family, and know you're with us from afar. And without further ado, Uma Thurman. Good evening, everyone. Thank you, Akila. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here. My name is Uma Thurman, and thank you for joining us tonight. This is the first time ever Boston and New York are celebrating their annual benefits together. We have over 400 different devices tuning in from around the country right now. 
I just have to switch because my teleprompter went down. I'm going to tell you all the truth. <laughs> um, and right as I, oh, we're back. Um, um, and as I speak, we have people joining us from as far west as California and far south as Texas. We even have some watch parties gathered together. And of course, this group, all of us in person in Long Island City, Queens. As a founding board member of Room to Grow, it is a joy to be here with you tonight. For 20 years, it has been my honor to serve our mission. What I knew and understood when I first met Julie Burns, when she began the organization, was that the developmental and material supports for babies and toddlers was dramatically uneven across the country. And all these years later, the gap for such support is ever widening. It's a fact that children who are born into low income circumstances often find themselves one grade level behind their higher income peers before they even have the chance to start kindergarten. This chasm for under resourced communities and services for parents and their children is real and it is inequitable. That's why the vision and work of Room to Grow is so critical. If I ask myself, as a mother, why Room to Grow's work is so impactful, I would answer that beyond the wide offering of material goods, most essentially, we provide emotional and mental support and guidance, welcoming parents into a community that cares about the future of their families. I believe that the love from a person who listens can be life-changing. To find your own voice as a mother or a father is empowerment and the greatest source of personal agency to pave a path forward for your family with hope. Proof of room to grow as meaningful to generational impact is evident by the outcomes families achieve. Nine out of 10 room to grow children are on track, meeting their developmental milestones and room to grow parents are showing high rates of self-reliance problem-solving skills, as well as reduced stress. In addition to celebrating the success of last year, we are also here tonight highlighting Room to Grow's transformative growth and impact in Boston and New York. This year, the program welcomed 200 new families, bringing the total participants to over 1,600 across both regions. This type of support this type of growth requires meaningful investments and commitment from our supporters, which is why I want to thank each and every one of you for attending virtually and in person tonight. Your presence demonstrates your commitment to the great work that we're doing together in the early childhood and public health fields, and your generosity tonight will make a dramatic impact in the lives of families in our community now and in the future. We are all here tonight because we believe that all children deserve the best chance to grow and to grow with pride. So I would lovingly like to now to welcome my daughter, Maya, whose commitment to Room to Grow is burgeoning. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Maya Thurman Hawk, and my mother, Uma, began her involvement with Room to Grow at its founding while she was pregnant with me. I am as old as room to grow. My mom has always wanted to be a mother and she understood that even though being a working mother, provider, badass presented its own challenges, where she was in her career made it possible for her to take care of me and herself simultaneously. Most women are not afforded that privilege. My mother's awareness of that based on her own childhood and the fact that she is a thinking, empathetic observer of the world impacted both the roles she chose through her career and the charitable foundation she's been involved in, namely Room to Grow. She understands how important it is to support women and children's rights in regards to sexual health, emotional well-being, safety, nutrition, and education through every step in the journey of parenthood in every socioeconomic group. There's that expression, it takes a village, when they talk about how difficult it is to raise children, and many families in under-resourced communities are alone. 
Room to Grow is that village, and through Room to Grow, we can all come together and be a village for those families. I am so impressed with everything Room to Grow is doing and believe that if we can support them in expanding the program and partnering with even more families, there is no end to the good they can do. Room to Grow's vision is one of equity for every family and their children. I am very grateful to be co-chairing this evening. I am grateful for the opportunity to get involved. It's time for my generation to stop taking in a constant stream of everything that's wrong in the world and start taking productive, manageable steps to try and change it. So even though everyone in that room is more qualified to speak about this than I am, thank you for including me. Thank you for teaching me about the work you do. It is an honor. I have been so inspired by my mother's passion and commitment for Room to Grow all these years, and I am proud to join alongside her in this mission. I'm very sorry that I can't be there tonight and that I have my hair curled in a 1950s style and I'm talking to you from my hotel room, but um, I am determined wherever I am to be a part of this unbelievable team. So eat, drink, spend, be merry. There's never been a better time to band together. Thank you. Thank you, Room to Grow. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Maya. We so wish you were here. That was incredibly inspiring. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sandra Medeiros, and I am New York's Executive Director. Tonight is a special night for me personally. This is my first big celebration with Room to Grow. And what a celebration it is. Over 400 people, all united under one mission. I've only joined Room to Grow this past March, but it feels like everything I've done up until now has been preparing me to be part of this work. I've spent my whole career in education, working in communities like Newark, Harlem, the Bronx, communities like the one I was born in, raised in, and continue to call home. During that time, I saw firsthand how many children living in under-resourced communities start school already behind their peers. I was one of those kids. Ever since learning about Room to Grow, I've been captivated. I haven't been able to stop thinking, what could have been the impact of having an early partner like Room to Grow for my students' families, or even my own? As I began meeting the team, our families, our committed network of supporters, I became even more inspired by Room to Grow's potential to increase opportunity and equity for hundreds more families. And I'm particularly excited to invite you all to join us on that journey. Akila said earlier, it's time to reflect. Do you aspire to become more involved in your community? What's one thing you've always wanted to do with Room to Grow to support our mission and work? Maybe it's to volunteer with us, but never could fit it into your busy schedule. What about cleaning out that closet or storage unit that's filled with your little one's toys and clothes from when they were young? Or finding a way to give back as a family? Well, I have a call to action. The time is now. And we're here to help you get started. Call us, email us, text us, shoot us a DM on Instagram. If you're new to Room to Grow, one thing you'll learn very, very quickly is that this is a truly welcoming community of people. I imagine many of you in our audience have felt that magic as I have at some point or another. And right now, you'll hear directly from some of our program participants and graduates about the supportive and loving Room to Grow space offers to everyone who walks through our doors. And now we're here for our families. A program like Room to Grow is important because it kind of gives parents a foundation to build on. For first parents like ourselves, it gives us some sort of comfort that we're not alone. They make you feel like comfortable, like you're in control, but also give you advice.
I think that it's amazing that this program is right smack in one of the unfortunate lowest income communities. I feel more purposeful. I feel more confident for sure. And I feel powerful in my steps. Being in Room to Grow just made me feel like I am a woman, I am powered. I have the strength to keep moving forward. I got this. The unique part of Room to Grow is the boutique. The experience to actually pick out stuff even before Xander was born was like, oh, wow, you know, I can imagine him in this, I can imagine him in that. We're gonna help you grow and we're gonna help your child grow. It's a nurturing, supportive environment. All the resources you need to help you parenting and keep you on the right track with your children. Feeling confident to like rise to the occasion, you know, we just we just really feel good as parents. Yeah, we feel really good. Yeah, we feel good. It's hard, but it's hard. <laughs> it's, it, we're okay. But we're okay, yeah. <laughs> and room to grow is one reason for that for sure. Hello and welcome to Boston. Come on in. I hope those stories gave you all more of a sense of what Room to Grow is all about. My name is Lauren Rogers. Many of you in Boston know me as Boston's lead fundraiser. And for the last nine months, I have stepped in as the interim deputy director. Right now, I am joining you live from our family center in Dorchester, Massachusetts. In 2018, our partners at the Epiphany School invited us to open a Room to Grow office right here in this family center. Through this mission-aligned partnership, Room to Grow's very first satellite site was born. Now, before we take you on a tour of the site, I have a very special announcement for you all, and you all on this call are the first to hear it. It is my great honor, and I am so proud to introduce Boston's new executive director, Onita Horn. <laughs> you can read more about Onita in the program book Onita joins us. Um, to read more about Onita, you can check her out in the program book. She's a native of Boston, loves flower bakery, just like the rest of our team, so she fits right in. And she's coming home to join us next month. Everyone, meet Onita. Thank you. Hello, Room to Grow family. I am so excited to meet so many of you in person soon. But for now, let's do this tour together. Here we are in the lobby of the Early Learning Center. When families come in, they might say hello to Josh. Hi, Hi. Josh. <laughs> a Room to Go staff member before heading upstairs. It is our goal for every family to receive a warm welcome no matter what Room to Grow site they visit. Currently, we have the capacity to support over 200 families at this family center. And here we are coming to the second floor. And say hello to the Room to Grow Boston team. Families come to Room to Grow every three months for the first three years of their children's life. Now the first hour of every two hour visit happens in this room over here. This is where a dedicated program staff person meets with parents to work to address their child's development and receive personal guidance in order to expand their parenting knowledge and skills. And then for the second hour, it's on to the baby boutique. This is my favorite part. Here is where they will meet with another staff member to co-select clothes, toys, gear to help support their child development. And as you can see, 
we have some friends here in the boutique today. So I'm going to give it over to Shelby, Room to Grow's Boston's clinical team lead. Thank you, Anita, and welcome to the Room to Grow family. I know the team and I are so excited to begin our work with Onita, and we are really looking forward to her leadership of the Boston region. My name is Shelby Distenfeld, and I am our clinical team lead here in Boston. Tonight, I have the incredible privilege of introducing our Room to Grow graduate speaker, Cassandra Joseph. Cassandra and her son, Jacoby, joined the Room to Grow program in 2018, and I was the lucky clinician who had the opportunity to work alongside them for three years. Over the course of our time together, I was blown away by Cassandra's drive to not only meet her own personal goals, but also to be the best role model she could be for her son. Cassandra approaches life with thoughtfulness and determination, and it was such a joy to be a part of Jacoby's early years. I am so glad that you have the opportunity to hear more about their story this evening. Please join me in welcoming Cassandra. Uh, thank you, Shelby, so much for that kind introduction. Sorry, I didn't think I would cry. Um, but hello and good evening, everyone. My name is Cassandra Joseph, and my son Jacoby and I are proud Room to Grow graduates of the class of 2021. I'm grateful to be sharing my story live from Room to Grow's Dorchester office, and I'm even more honored to be sharing this podium with Shelby, my Room to Grow clinician who has given me so much support over the last three years of this journey as a first time single mom. When I think about my motherhood journey, I think back to the time when I first found out I was pregnant. I was shocked, so shocked that I remember the breath completely leaving my body. At that point in time in my life, I was 26 and just moved out of my parents' house, which was a really big deal. Growing up in a strict Haitian family, you're expected to leave your parents' home once you get married and not a minute sooner. Also, my son's father and I, we were not together, and our relationship when we were together wasn't a healthy one. So I found myself pregnant at a time when I was figuring out how to be on my own for the first time in my life and not at all thinking about becoming a mother. I felt alone and very afraid. I'm the kind of person that goes MIA when things go wrong in my life. And at this time, I stopped speaking to my friends and I fell into a very deep depression because I was unsure if I was gonna continue my pregnancy. This decision weighed on me heavily and it was always looming in the back of my mind. Then one day, my friends invited me to go shopping and to go grab a bag to eat. I was happy and laughing for the first time in a really long time. On my drive home, I made the decision to keep my baby. And at that moment, I felt a weight lift off my shoulders. And although I knew the road ahead would be challenging, I knew it was the right decision for me. I was also, at that moment, I realized that if I was gonna ta tackle raising a child on my own, I would need support. But seeking support programs and resources turned out to be more challenging than I thought. I didn't seem to qualify for any of them, and it was very discouraging. Finally, after speaking to my OBGYN at Beth Israel, I was connected to Room to Grow. Getting into the program eased my mind a bit, and I was very excited for my first appointment. As soon as I walked into the Room to Grow office space, I was greeted with toys, books, and bright clothes displayed all around. I immediately felt welcomed and at peace. More importantly, I was greeted with a warm smile. I remember leaving my first Room to Grow appointment feeling a little bit more prepared for everything that was about to come. I felt like someone had my back and I wasn't totally by myself. 
Over the three years in the program, Shelby truly became my sounding board. She was there as I achieved major milestones and overcame some of my biggest challenges. Like moving back into my parents' house, finding a place for my, of my own for Jacoby and I, finding a secure remote job before the pandemic, and navigating co-parenting with someone who was not easy to co-parent with. Then of course there were the books, clothes, and toys. I left every visit not worrying that my son wouldn't have what he needed to thrive. And boy has he thrived. Jacoby is now three, he's in preschool, he's very kind, funny, curious, helpful, and talkative. Very talkative. He loves trucks, music, and arts and crafts. But more importantly, he has taught me the greatest life lessons. He's given me the confidence to advocate for myself. And because of him, my dreams and goals have new meaning. He is the world to me, and I want the world for him. Beyond a happy and healthy childhood, I hope Jacoby grows up to be confident in who he is as a black boy and man, and that he shows up and occupies every space that he steps into. For myself, I plan to continue building my podcast, Dear Fellow Black Single Mom, and attend grad school in the fall of 2022 to become a social worker. Currently, I'm working on launching my own business called The Deep Work Collective, a safe space created for black women by a fellow black woman to unpack trauma, gain clarity, find tools to heal, and live the lives that we deserve and desire to live. Safe spaces like the one that Room to Grow provided for me and all its families. When I look back at my Room to Grow experience, the most important thing Shelby in the program provided me was validation. During every visit, I was reminded that I'm a really great mom and I'm doing a great job. And there were a lot of times that I really needed to hear that. Thank you so much for listening to my story and I hope you can see how much of a difference Room to Grow makes for families like mine. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. How's everyone doing this evening? Good. Everyone in the room is doing well. How's everyone doing at home? I guess you're doing well because I can't hear you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be such an amazing night. I want to tell you, first and foremost, I'm so delighted to be here for Room to Grow because Room to Grow was one of the first auctions that I took almost 15 years ago. So thank you to Room to Grow for always having me back, even at the beginning when I wasn't very good at my job. Really appreciate that. Um, this is going to be a really, really short auction. There are only two live lots and then a quick paddle raise. And it's going to be a first for all of us because this is my first time doing a hybrid auction. So everyone who's bidding in Boston and around the world will be bidding on this screen against everyone in this room. If everything messes up, well, it's charity auctioneering, ladies and gentlemen. The bar is so low. How, lo how much lower can we get? Actually, I can tell you because I took auctions in my living room with three children hiding in my apartment for almost a year and a half. So no one is happier to be here than me right now. Trust me. All right. So yes, thank you for applauding. I love your applause. Um, all right. Lot number one, ladies and gentlemen, we just heard from the unbelievable Maya Hawk, who I felt like was doing an Oscar winning performance during that small snippet and Maya has offered the ability to attend a private screening with her and five of your friends at a super chic restaurant called Uncle Chop Chop in the West Village sometime in 2022 which of course is going to be the coolest thing you do in 2022 let's be honest so uh, you're welcome for even giving you that opportunity so um, the way this works is very easy I will take bids in the room I can also take them anywhere virtually so if you are looking on that camera right now feel free to just dial into event gives and make sure to push the button. We're going to start at $1,000. I can take it by $500 increments up. Oh, proud mom there, starting off at $1,000 in the room. Alice and my Vanna White will be doing phone bidding, so we have $1,000 here. I'll take a bit of $1,500 next, and I will glance from time to time. Hello, Jason. $1,500 is bid in the center of the room at $1,500 here. We have two bids at $1,500. $2,000 is bid in a new place on the floor bid at $2,000. Thank you, Allison. 
$2,500 is bid. At $2,500 here, we have $3,000. Thank you, Haiti Mendez. Jumping in, and Lionel Harris. Who's Lionel Harris? What a name at $2,500. $3,000 at Haiti. Lionel is back in at $3,500. And Claire Ellis at home is saying, go Lionel. You guys are not even involved in this right now. A floor bid at $4,000. Can you imagine how much fun this was for me to do by myself in my living room for months? Seriously. We're at $4,000. We have another bid at $4,000. $4,500 on my right. At $4,500 here, I'll take a bit of $5,000. $5,000. Lionel, back. $5,000. Good job, Lionel. I don't know where you're coming from, but I hope it is some fabulous place. Maybe a Greek island? I don't know. That's what I think for you, Lionel. That's what I hope for you. $5,000. Wait. Phil Russo is in the room, ladies and gentlemen, at $5,500 with my bid at $5,500 at home. Come on, room. You guys are doing not that well. Come on. We are at $5,506,000. Lionel, Lionel, how do you pronounce his name? It's a mystery. We are at $6,000. What is his name? Lionel. It's Lionel, but I'm going to call you Lionel just because I can because you're not here. All right, we're at $6,000, but I like your bidding. And Haiti said, LOL. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's, it's my virtual audience here, and you guys are doing nothing, literally. We're at $6,000 with my virtual audience. Floorboards are a real pain when you're in heels. We're at $6,000 with my virtual audience. Any advance in the room? Welcome to the auction, ma'am, at $6,500. <laughs> Lionel, Lionel, whatever your name is, what do you say? Lionel, they say in the room, but I say Lionel. All right, we're at 6,500. I hope you have a sense of humor, sir. Uh, we're at $6,500 on my right. Any advance? $7,000 to Lionel. Congratulations. Congratu <laughs> it's been too long. Like, I need to take more auctions, obviously. We're at $7,000 with whatever his name is in Greece, we said. Very attractive man, by the way, just so you guys know. A man looks like George Clooney when he was younger before the twins. That's right. At $7,000, 7,500, man. $7,500 is bid. That's right. New York is killing it at $7,500. Who is Haiti in her comments? Haiti, I love you. I think you might be a tween and I'm into it. Oh, snap. We're at $7,500. I think that's what the young people do. That's what we do, the young people, Haiti. We're at $7,500. Lionel. What do you say? Oh, Haiti said I'm a New York City board member. So maybe you're older than 12 to 13. I like your lingo. $8,000 is bid. $8,000 is bid. 8,500, and she's out. All right, Lionel, if you were here right now, you would hear people chanting your name. It's like a thousand trillion people chanting the wrong name, because I still, now I'm unsure if it's Lionel or Lionel, but uh, it doesn't matter, because you're the winning bidder. At $8,000, any advance over our incredibly smart and generous bidder, let's say his name together, shall we? Lionel. Lionel. Everyone in the room, I hope you heard it at home at $8,000. Sold to you for $8,000. Congratulations. You guys, that was not half bad for a hybrid auction. I was concerned. You guys did a great job. All right. Lot number two, this is our second and last lot. Quick paddle raise. I'm off the stage. Trip to Bermuda. Who has left the United States of America in the past two years? Yeah. Okay. Well, don't raise your hand because everyone will be jealous. But for the rest of us... You can go to Bermuda. Two nights, perfect amount of time, a deluxe room at the Hamilton Princess and Beach Club for two people, known as the Pink Palace, but whatever. It's not in the United States of America, so that's good enough for me. And not that I don't love America, that's not what I meant by that. I just meant, who doesn't love Bermuda? The best part of this lot, actually, ladies and gentlemen, golf for one. Have a great time, honey. Have a great time playing golf. All right. This is an incredible golf course designed by Jack not Nicholson, Nicklaus, Nicholas, Nicholas, anyway. Big golfer, that guy, big golfer. I'm kidding, seriously, it's the only thing my husband's talked about all of COVID. I know everything you'd wanna know about golf and I will not tell you. All right, Bermuda, golf for one. I'll start the bidding again at $1,000. Do I have $1,000 anywhere in the room? 
you guys, look at these people. Just can't keep their fingers off the button, drinking tequila in their living rooms, and here they're all going to Bermuda. We have Bryce, we have Christian, we have Kelly. At least these names are one way or the other. You know what I mean? We're at $2,000 with Kelly. Kelly is already drinking her first rum punch in Bermuda, ladies and gentlemen, in her mind. She is by that turquoise water. She knows what's coming in New York City, for those of us who are here. It's 100 inches of snow. We've been so lucky. I see you nodding, sir. I know you know what I'm talking about. We're at $2,000 and Casey is in at $2,500. At $2,500. Do I have a bit of $3,000? This is Bermuda. Golf for one, which means you get alone time on the beach, which I think is the most priceless thing ever. We are at $3,000 with Giselle is here. Hmm. I wonder if that's the Giselle. Welcome, Giselle. All right. Virginia is in at $3,500. Come on, New York. It'd be nice to have someone raising their hand here, but that's fine. All right, $3,500 to my online bidders from around the world. $4,000 is bid by Shadman. $4,500 from Casey and in the orange dress. $5,000 is bid with you, ma'am, at $5,000. That's right, New York. That's right. You should applaud. We have one representative right now against the world. $5,500 on my left. Thank you, sir. $6,000, ma'am. $6,000 is bid. $6,000. The color orange is a favored color in Bermuda. I just made that up. $6,500 from Casey. Who is Casey? <laughs> Not wearing an orange dress. I don't know. Are you? I don't know. It's hard to see. $7,000? $7,000 is bid. Brad Pitt's twin jumped out of the bidding after rate one, one bid and he's out. <laughs> You can put that on your Instagram handle. I called you that in front of 100 people. We are at $7,000 with the lady in orange. Yes, $7,500. $7,500. But orange is a power color. We all know it. We're at $7,500. $8,000. Do you like the sun? Warm weather. Good cocktails. Turquoise water. $8,000 is bid. $8,000. There's a cat in the room. Just so you know what's going on here. That's what's happening in New York City, right? Actually, that's a perfect personification of New York City right now. There is a cat in the room. We are at $8,000, sir. $8,500? I did say golf for one. Do you golf, sir? I did say, I'm sorry, let me just, and I meant Brad Pitt from River Runs Through It. I didn't mean Brad Pitt of late, you know what I mean? Just... As I said, let's get in that time machine. We all lost a couple of years here and there, but we're at $8,000 with my best friend in the orange dress, which I'm gonna borrow, unless Brad Pitt from River Runs Through It jumps in. Any advance? Oh, that's, those are good friends. $8,500 is bid. $8,500 is bid. 9,000, ma'am. We're at $8,500 on my left. Any advance? The Uma poster, all right. At $8,500, Brad Pitt makes an entrance into Bermuda for $8,500. Going once, twice. Sold to you, sir, for $8,500. Congratulations, a huge round of applause to both of my bidders and all of my bidders from around the world, including Lionel, Lionel. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm done with a live auction. Breathe a sigh of relief. This is the only thing that we have left to do tonight, and that's the paddle raise. I'm gonna say this at the beginning, and I will say it throughout. Every dollar we raise this evening is equally important, no matter where it is. So if you can give at any level, and I mean that at any level, please do and applaud wildly for anyone who gives. And then I will be off stage and you guys can drink tequila and have a night and not remember it tomorrow. So that's your roadmap for the night, especially if you're at home, just go to sleep on your couch. All right, ladies and gentlemen, a paddle raise works like this. I start at the highest level, we go down. If you are using event.gives right now, just make sure to hold the button until it says that you have confirmed that bid. And I'm gonna start at the highest level, which is $25,000 which supports three families for all three years of Room to Grow. Is there anyone at the $25,000 level, $25,000 at table three? Thank you so much at $25,000.
Is there anyone else at the $25,000 level right now? And to the AV team in the back, right now my confidence monitor is not showing any kind of donation platform. Just so you guys can work on that while we're working through this. So if there's anyone, yeah, there we go. Look at that. They just make things happen. That's what is so nice about not being in my living room right now. All right, so we have $25,000 bid in the room and I will take it to $10,000, which supports one family for all three years. Is there anyone at the $10,000 level? To the lady in orange, thank you so much. At $10,000, thank you so much. And to paddle 193 in the beautiful sequin dress. Everyone is just killing it fashion-wise tonight. Thank you so much. And we have Adolf, Adolphine, Adol help me with this one. Adolphine, what a name, gorgeous. $10,000, thank you, and so much to Julia Haley as well at $10,000. Ladies and gentlemen, you've just raised $40,000 at the $10,000 level. And another floor bid, paddle 191 at $10,000 on our right. Thank you so much, ma'am. A quick $50,000, yeah. I feel like a round of applause for that. To $5,000 we go, supporting one family for two years. Anyone at the $5,000 level? Either in the room, thank you so much, Jason, at table number three for $5,000 in front of me. Is there anyone else at the $5,000 level? We're at $5,000 here. Shadman Riaz, thank you so much at $5,000. And it looks like Jacqueline jumped in at another $10,000 when we weren't looking. Thank you so much for that. And another at $5,000. Thank you, Bryce and Rebecca Gordon as well also from our online community. All right, we're gonna keep moving. $2,500 supports one family for one year. Anyone at the $2,500 level? You guys, I have a couple more levels. Thank you so much. Thank you to the ma'am in the white blazer in the back. And may I see your paddle number, just so I can read it out. Paddle 245, thank you so much. Paddle 243 at the table with the younger Brad Pitt. Paddle 240, also on my left. Thank you so much. Another at 2,500. And then I'm seeing someone waving. Oh. Confidence Monitor, Sudi, Jennifer and Rob, Melissa and Phil, thank you all so much for your bids of $2,500. Oh, Paddle 209, I saw you, sir. I thought you were working out. I didn't realize you were raising a paddle, you know? It's so funny, things like that happen. All right, <coughs> excuse me, $500 builds a family's library of 130 books. You guys, three levels to go. $500, anyway, who doesn't like books? They're the best. 196, thank you. 242, thank you so much. 186, thank you, sir. 219, 192, 223, 226, 201, 218, 222, can I just say this is an incredibly generous table over here. Battle 178, 203, 217, 208 on my right. Give yourselves a huge round of applause. There was a ton of paddles in the air. <coughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, only two left and then I'm off stage, I promise. Oh, and there's so many more, gosh, okay. Kathy, Kayla, Phil, Todd, Joseph, Jeannie, Steven, Krista, Pam, Grace. Do you guys like that? Help me with this one. Guy Geet. <laughs> That's it. I got it. I don't think so. All right. Uh, Geet. <laughs> this is such an exercise in names. I wish I was having kids and then I could have all these great names. Casey and Kelly. And Richard jumped in at another 2,500. And Dan and Sudi. Guys, great job in the online giving community. Great job in the room. $250 providing a safe sleep environment for a newborn baby. Really, the word newborn baby just, I feel like, gets paddles in the air. I was correct. 249, thank you so much. In the back of the room, 166 at $250. And thank you, sir. I like the hand, hand going up. Anyone else? Thank you. At 224, we have Tracy and William, anonymous, very mysterious. Alexander, Haiti, Amanda, thank you all. And Siobhan at $250. Final level, ladies and gentlemen, $100. Anyone in the room or anyone online? And then you guys have the rest of your evening to enjoy. You've done the fundraising. You've heard incredible speeches. What a night you've had, and it's just beginning. $100, anyone in the room? Paddle 205, thank you so much, ma'am. And I'm sure there are more on our online community. If you are online, you can continue giving throughout the evening, so I would suggest you just finish that bottle of tequila and just keep pressing that button, and we'll see how that all works out. For the rest of you, Enjoy a beautiful night in New York City. What an October night. Thank you for paying attention. Have a wonderful night. I look forward to seeing you all in person next year.
And with that, it's a wrap. Thank you for everyone who tuned in virtually across the globe here with us in New York. Have a good night and thank you for your support. Thank you so much. And we all miss Julie Burns tonight, our founder and inspiration. To you, Julie, at home, thank you. And we love you, Boston. Thank you.